Sometimes you just need a super squishy, incredibly cozy cowl to keep you warm. When you do, I've got you covered with this one. The stitch pattern in this project mimics a knit rib, giving it the stretch it needs to be comfortable. And, and it only uses a single stitch throughout the entire project. The step-by-step -step tutorial is coming up. The yarn really is the star of this project. I'm a sucker for roving yarn and the texture of Peyton's alpaca blend is really, really beautiful. If you need to substitute though, make sure you do so with another bulky number five yarn. So normally I'd dive right into the project and work alongside you, but for this one, I wanna use a lighter yarn that's easier for you to see what I'm doing. So to get us started, I'll work the stitch pattern with a little swatch and jump into the full project a little later. So go ahead and make your slip knot and create 75 chains. Remember, I'm just making a few to get you started. Then find the second chain from the hook and work a half double crochet there. And in each remaining chain. Super simple for this row. So I'm working in the back bump of the chain because I think it looks a lot neater and it actually makes our life a little bit easier at the end of this project, but you can do what works best for you. When you reach the end of the row, it'll look something like this, only much longer of course, because you're working the full project. Then chain one, which doesn't count as a stitch for this project, and turn. For this entire project, you'll be working in the back bar of the previous row stitches. So you have your regular V, your stitch here at the top that you're used to working into. Well, down from that is the back bar. Work a half double crochet in the back bar. And continue with that to the end of the row. Now the last stitch can look a little wonky, so if you need help finding the back bar, it's always good to first find the V, the stitch that you see up at the top of the work, and move straight down from that. Now the cool part is when you flip it over. The row of Vs along the top is sort of forced down, and that creates the ribbing texture. So you'll chain one, and turn. And again, here is the line of back bars to work into. It might be a little hard to find them at first, but the more you get into this project, it'll get easier and easier. Now that's really all there is to the stitch pattern. Every row you'll simply half double crochet in the back bar of every stitch, chain one and turn and repeat. So work this until you reach the end of your first ball of yarn. And when you have just a few inches left in that yarn, grab the new one and work the next stitch through the yarn over and pull through and then loop the new yarn, place it on your hook and pull through to finish the stitch. Then secure it to the back and we'll weave those ends later. I like to call this the rule of the last motion Whenever you need to add a new ball of yarn or a new color, 
work the last stitch to the last motion, which is usually yarn over and pull through something, pull through two, pull through three, depending on the stitch you're working, and use the new color to finish the stitch. That always gets the job done for me. So finish crocheting through your second ball of the same color. Yes, I'm using my tulips again, guys. I just couldn't stay away from them for too long. I just love these things. The Odyssey are gorgeous. And I love my rose gold Odyssey. But I really just can't get past how wonderful these hooks are to crochet with. After you've worked the repeat through two balls of yarn, your color A, at the end of the row, when you run out, you'll add color B, just like you did to add the new ball of yarn. Crochet through that color, then add the third color, and crochet through that one too. So when it's all said and done and you lay it out, you'll have a larger color A stripe and two smaller stripes for color B and color C. All right, now for the join. Find the back bar of your last row and make sure that's facing up when you fold it in half. Then slip stitch to the opposite side to get the join started. And enter your hook through the back bar on the front side and through the V so both loops on the opposite side. Now that side is the foundation chain, so that's another reason why working in the back bump of the chain on your first row is a good idea. It makes this step a whole lot easier. Now the reason we're joining like this is because if you look at the right side, the seam matches the stitch pattern perfectly, so you can't even tell it's there. When you're all done, go ahead and fasten off. And of course, weave in your ends. That's all for now, friend. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoy this one. Don't forget to check the description below for a link to the pattern if you have any questions about the supplies I'm using or anything else. You can view the pattern completely for free on my website, or if you prefer to have a copy in hand to print or save for later, you can pick up the PDF from my shop. You'll find a link to both of those options in the description below. Now, if you haven't subscribed already, I'd love to have you part of this community so I can keep inspiring you to make something that makes you happy. Your support, liking the videos, commenting, subscribing, and sharing with your friends, checking out the patterns on my website, buying PDFs or merch from my shop, that incredible support 100% keeps this channel going. And I just want to say thank you for that support because there's no way I could keep doing what I'm doing without it. Happy hooking, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, hey, <laughs> pardon me while I take a sip of my coffee and take a quick moment to thank our latest coffee club member, Stephanie. Stephanie, thank you so much for joining the coffee club. You have no idea, one, how much I'm enjoying this cup of joe, but also how much your support means to me and just how far your cup of joe will go to helping me help you make something that makes you happy. My mission here with Be Hooked, and uh, you've helped me with that this month, and for that, I am so grateful. Now, Stephanie has recently started her YouTube channel. I will have a link to that in the description below, so if you wanna check that out, maybe get to know Stephanie a little bit better. And uh, yeah, 
If you would like a shout out just like this one, all you have to do is join the coffee club. So if you want to check that out, I'll have a link for you in the description below. And maybe, just maybe, the next shout out I record will be yours. Okay, bye.